Okay, so someone help me out. I will start you by saying that theta there is the unknown, so I'm just going to call it theta. And then you're going to have to give me some lengths, right? What lengths can we put onto here? Someone tell me the first length they tell you is what? 30 meters, right? Where's that? That's our height there, so that's, I'm going to call that 30 meters. What's the other length? Four kilometers, but I'm not going to write down four kilometers because I've already locked myself into a unit of measurement here. So I'm going to write the 4,000. Where am I going to put it? Across the bottom. It's that horizontal length, so 4,000 meters. So now we're going to make a statement, right? We're just going to pull out our right angle triangle tree. What did you write? Yep. Yeah, get louder, sir. Huh? Yeah. Thank you very much. And you can see here, right, and by the way, I will permit you to have terrible scale on this because, you know, I'm not going to do something to scale when it's 4,000. Um, at this point, because we've established we've got small theta there, right? So what can I say theta is approximately equal to? Just, just that guy, right? Theta and tan theta for small values of theta are going to be pretty much the same. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to simplify that to 3 and 400. But don't forget, and I think it's actually important that you should write this, even though it's implied, there's units that come along for the ride, right? This is radians. When you don't provide an angle, now that you know what radians are, you should assume it's implied to be in radians. But when you provide them, because you're going to be going back and forth between them, if I were you, I mean, there is a symbol for it. But, number one, almost no one uses it. And number two, it looks very much like a degree sign, so I never actually do that. I always write that. Can someone actually tell me? Um, because you, they don't want an answer in radians, do they? They want an answer in degrees. So how did you, did you get a conversion? What'd you get? Can someone actually tell me, re, give me a calculator readout, because this is a good point to, to say something, right? You get a zero first, don't you? You get a zero, and then what? Degrees. Do you get another zero? Do you really? I expected to get something here. 25? Then do you get a, I think you've got like a minute here, right? And then what, what do you get after that? That's the important part. 46 point? Nine, nine what, sorry? Nine, nine. nine, nine. And then there's probably the double dash, right? Now, this is a good point to remember because we haven't looked at this for a while, right? This is going to be one of the most confusing kind of things that's handed to you in any way because you've got measurements in uh, lots of 60, lots of 60, lots of 60, and then you're like, haha, decimal, right? So that's why you can see this is actually going to be the 46.99. That actually rounds, careful, there are 60 seconds in a minute. So this is like 47 of those seconds. So 47 is clearly closer to 60, isn't it? Right? So this is, in fact, not 25 minutes. It's actually 26. Did I say minutes? Yeah, degrees, minutes, seconds. Yeah, that's sneaky. Easy thing to get wrong. Um, that's why it's so important to write that line before your approximation, because if you're lucky, right, there's pretty much only one spot that we look for approximation. We don't tell you which one it is. We just say it's only one. Otherwise, you get docked like 10 times. So if you're lucky and you approximate this wrong, but you had this written down, at least I can give you a thumbs up. If you didn't write this, you went straight to 25. Sorry, that's just, it's not, it's not the answer, and I can't see what you did. All right. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Your brain feeling okay? It's, it's not that complicated, is it? Like, you just make sure you draw your diagram clearly, pick your approximation, and then use your rounding and units carefully, okay? So these are the applied situations, right? You're gonna have to draw your triangles facing in different directions, but that's basically it. Let's actually rewind. So this is, I've even written these up just so you can see it and not have to flick back one page of your PDF. These are what we mean by these pure questions, theoretical, right? These don't seem to apply to anything. It's just kind of, these are related to the limits. So we're just gonna see what we can do. This is the limit stated as vanilla as you can be, right? So what's this equal to? This is the result we put a box around. It's just one, right? But then, very quickly, they're like, what if it doesn't exactly match up? What if it's not exactly this particular combination or it doesn't include 10 or that kind of thing? When the numbers don't match up, you're just going to have to fiddle with this so the numbers do match up, right? So we want this theta and this theta to match. So I want it so that I could write this. 3x on sine 3x. If those angles match, I'm good. Now, of course, you can't just change it to 3x because you want to, right? What would I have to do to this to turn that into a 3? Well, I'm going to have to multiply by something, right? Have a think. I want this 3 to cancel with something and then actually end up with 5, right? Because that's what you started with, right? I don't want there to be a 3 there. And I do want there to be a 5 there. Do you see that's where I've come from, right? 
five thirds of that would take me back to my original question. But of course, five thirds, five thirds is independent of x, isn't it? Like whatever x is equal to, five thirds is equal to five thirds. He doesn't care, right? So in fact, you can actually take that limit out, like so. Or sorry, you can take that fraction out of the limit. That five thirds, I've just factorized it out. And now you've got what we've been dealing with, right? That's that theta on sine theta that we were searching for. It just so happens that our theta is 3x. Um, just a minor point. It's a very niggly thing, but I'm just going to encourage you to do this because I know in an HSC pass they looked for this. You could say, well, that's clearly 5 thirds. It is. That's what the answer says. But I want you to actually evaluate this thing. I know it's equal to something trivial, but I want you to say, I know what that's equal to. It's equal to an object. I didn't just make it disappear. And then you can say, all right, that's 5 thirds. That's a bit of a small thing to really worry about, but someone once upon a time, actually not someone, a lot of someone's lost a mark because they didn't put that one in the HSC. So sometimes they're looking for that particular thing. I'm just going to wave the flag now.